All right, and welcome to this week's vlog. So this week I'm gonna give you some tips and advice on how to pack a bike bag or box and fly with your bike. Now, this is something that I do a lot working for Cycling Weekly and I've also been able to try out most of the bags and boxes that are on the market. So hopefully even if you're experienced with flying with a bike, you should still be able to get some tips from this video. And I'm sure that equally many of you have never flown with a bike before. And if you haven't, then there should be some really useful advice in this video for you. Now, as ever, stay tuned to the end of the vlog for competition time. There is a competition this week, so that's pretty cool. Time to pack up Gwyneth. So I'm flying out to Mallorca and I thought this was a good opportunity to show you how I pack a bike into a bike box. I'm gonna share with you little sort of nuggets and little tricks and hacks that I've learned doing this so that you can protect your bike and hopefully it gets there in one piece. And also, um, there's quite a few things I do when I pack the bike down that sort of make uh, life less stressful when you're then building it on the other side as well. So, in this time I'm traveling, I've got this new VeloVolt bike box as well, which is a hard case, as you can see. And it was actually made from Barney the Dinosaur. VeloVolt killed Barney the Dinosaur, melted him down, and then recast him as this bike box. So, now don't worry, no Barney the Dinosaurs were harmed in the making of this bike box. Yeah, I'm a big fan of hard cases. So this VeloVolt is a hard case, and a lot of people use soft cases. I've used soft cases in the past, but soft cases, they just don't offer as much protection to your bike. First thing I do is take the pedals off, and I'll, I like to as well, I like to uh, put the pedals in my hand luggage. You don't get pedals taken off you in hand luggage in your, on your carry-on. Um, they're not considered to be a lethal weapon yet. So it's good to have your pedals with you because say, for example, the worst does happen and your bike box goes missing in transit. If you've got your pedals with you still, then you can hire a bike and you've got your pedals and your shoes. So the same goes for your shoes as well. Put your shoes on your carry-on, put your pedals in your carry-on, and that way... You know, if your bike does get stolen or broken or lost by the carrier, then you can at least hire a bike and you've got the pedals and the shoes sorted. So, I'm taking the seat post out. Now, it's a good idea to mark your seat post so that you know the exact point. You don't have to then measure it and faff around with tape measures. You know the exact point in which to reinsert it when it goes back in. If you have a bike with DI2, then it's common for the battery to be in the seat tube, like on the foil. So when you take the seat tube out, the little cable emerges. Now, what can happen if you're not careful? If you just leave that as it is, while your bike's in transit, the cable can disappear down that hole, which makes for a really, really fun game when you get to your destination of trying to work out ways to fish out that cable from right inside your bottom bracket. It's not fun. So top little tip is just to get a bit of black insulation tape or white insulation tape. Um, all, all colors are okay. <laughs> and just tape it there on the edge just to stop it coming away. Another thing is if you have an in a seat post clamp like that, take that out as well and put that along with other bits in a safe little sealed bag somewhere um, where it's not going to get lost. That's another classic mistake people do. They leave little bits like that in the bike and obviously they rattle, they come out and they lose them. They get to the other end and then a little innocuous clamp like that, but it, without it you can't use your bike. So make sure little bits like that are taken out and put somewhere safe. Now I'm going to take the handlebars off. Most bike bags and boxes require you to take the handlebars off. Now what you don't want to do is disconnect any of the cables, especially if you're running hydraulic disc brakes like this, because that is just going to be a faff. And 
On the Scott, we've got an integrated bar and stem, which isn't ideal. Transporting a bike with an integrated bar and stem, you know, it's a more aero setup, but it's not as practical for when you're transporting your bike. It's easier if you have um, a separate bar and stem because it means that you can actually leave the stem on the bike by just loosening it, twisting it round, and then leaving it on there. And that means that you don't have to worry about your headset getting loose and re-tightening your headset. You can leave the headset as it is. But I can't do that on this bike, um, so I'm going to have to remove the whole thing. Really cool feature on the Scott, though, is that the tool to remove the wheels, the little lever that sticks into the wheels, is exactly the same as for the top cap and the stem bolts. So it's like an all-in-one tool for the bike. It's really clever, really clever piece of design. We'll take that little bit off. We'll put that with the other bits that we don't want to lose. There we go, and the handlebars are off. So the handlebars can now be like nestled next to the bike uh, in transit. But this is important. You see here, we've got the stem bolts. Now I've just loosened those to take that off, but that means they can just fall out. And again, this is a thing that I've seen people do. They, they get to their destination and they can't find their stem bolts. So what you should always do is once you've loosened them and taken them off, just tighten them back up a bit, just so that they're not gonna come out. the bike down. If you're taking a disc brake bike, another good thing to use is these little wedges that go inside the caliper. And the reason for that is, is if you're using hydraulics, when you pull the lever, when there's no disc rotor in the caliper, it can close it. And you can fix this problem by just pushing the pistons apart again, as I'm sure many of you will know. But it's just an unnecessary faff. So to avoid it, you can just put one of these wedges in. And if you don't have one of these, folded up business card will do the job. I'm taking disc brakes and one of the big advantages of this VeloVolt bike box is that it's designed to accommodate bikes with disc brakes. Now there's two ways it does that. Firstly there's recesses there to protect the rotor um, and this is important because rotors can get bent in transit. So if you don't have a specific box like this, I strongly recommend taking your rotors off and then just reattaching them on the other side. The other thing is that a lot of bike boxes, you fit your wheel into the lid like this with the through axle, um, with the quick release skewer to lock it in place. You can't do that with a through axle when it's in this plastic, but Good design here, the VeloVolt uses these Velcro straps. If you're using through axles, you can just strap your wheel in um, and that holds it in place. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So something I like to do that's not essential, but I think it's quite worth doing is um, with your rear mech, you often put it into the smallest ring at the back just to take the wheel out. But that means that the rear mech's then sticking out a bit. And sometimes you can bend your hanger of your rear mech in transit. So to help that, I often just push it back in. Another top tip for disc brake bikes is to put the, uh, your through axles back in. It stops you losing them for one, but also that it's a good place to store them and they just stop, uh, it helps strengthen the bike as well. So it stops it getting crushed, you know, they firm it all up. So a bit of a no brainer really. Same principle applies to your bottle cages. Leave your bottles in the cages because it stops the cages getting crushed and you know, you know protects those as well. It's a good way of packing your bike. If you have to take your stem off like I've done, then if you've got additional spaces for your headset, which I don't, then you can actually just fill your headset full of spaces. 
And what this will do is it means that you can just hold, hold your headset in place. You can get away without this, but I often like to put some additional bubble wrap in there because it doesn't weigh anything and it just helps protect things and stops things rubbing against themselves. So one thing I do is put a load of bubble wrap just around the rear mech because it's a particularly delicate area and I just think a bit of additional padding is always going to be good. So when I like to wrap that there quite nicely, just helps protect it against the box and stuff, which is good. And um, a bit as well here because the bike can move and then the teeth can catch against the uh, the bottom of the box here and you can get a bit of dirt. So I quite like to put some around here just because it's all sharp. Uh, I'm just going to take this home now because I'm going to put some other stuff in there before I travel. So you can fit loads of clothes and like other objects in your bike bag. A uh, track pump is a standard thing I always take and that just slots in the bike bag as well. And I often put helmet in a bike bag. But clothing's good because it just adds a bit more padding. So I'm just going to close the Velovolt now and I want to show you closing this bike box because it's got another feature I really like, which is this crush pole design. So the crush pole is fixed and it guides in place into this cone here and it just goes into place and closes really easily and then that's in place. Now other designs such as the Bike Box Allen which I've used a lot has a removable crush pole and this isn't as good for a few reasons. So it's a lot more of a faff to close the box but also if through customs someone checks your bike box when it's going being loaded into the plane they inevitably take the crush pole out and then we've seen in a few times when they, they don't put the crush pole back in so without the crush pole the strength of the box is massively compromised but because it is a bit of a faff to put back in often these sort of customs types uh, don't put it back in properly and don't close the box properly so the fact that this is a much easier box to close it's a good advantage it goes on there like that, stops your frame rubbing against your wheels. Boom. Cool. I'm back now in Cycling Weekly Mega Death Base and uh, Gwyneth survived the flight as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so the VeloVault did its job. Um, I'm going to give you a few key bullet points to take away from how to pack a bike. So first thing is make sure that all bolts are tightened. So where you've removed the seat post or the bars, re-tighten those bolts because even if they're just slightly loose they'll come undone and probably fall around in your bike and you'll never see them again um, the other thing is use clothes for padding inside your box it's a good good way to pad out your bike and bear in mind that things move around inside the box as you're pushing it along and also uh, baggage handlers chuck them around so don't have like a loose spanner in there or loose allen keys that can fly around and damage your your bike and your carbon frame so that's another point and uh, the other thing I would say is be wary if you're traveling with disc brakes. If you have a bike box like the VeloVault I was using that can accommodate discs, then that's great, but many uh, existing bags don't. And when I've used soft case bags before, we've actually bent rotors in transit. We sort of left them on because we wanted to see if they'd survive as well, like we've tried it out. But uh, yeah, it is possible to bend rotors. So if you're worried about your rotors being bent, take them off and just put them somewhere safe and wrap them up and you can attach them at the other end. 
The other thing to do, top tip, is prepare yourself mentally before entering the airport for lots of lingering rude stares from other travellers who stare at your bike box just wondering what's in there. Like, like, you get, this is the typical thing here, you get this. What do they think's in the bike box? Schrodinger's cat? You know you're a cyclist when you go to an airport, you've got your bike box or bag, and everyone stares at it like it's the weirdest thing they've ever seen. Like, what on earth is in that? I don't know. Anyway, a quick update on the VeloVolt and how that performed. So, first thing to point out is the VeloVolt haven't paid for this video in any way. They simply sent their new box in, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to sort of make this video, give you some tips. Uh, while testing a new product as well. So it performed pretty well. Like I think it's a great option for anyone with disc brakes. Um, and the split pole design is good and there's a lot of features that make it a good bike box. But I did encounter one problem with it. And uh, after it came off the belt the second time, um, I think one of the baggage handlers or something has, has knocked one of the front wheels um, and it's bent and it means that the box is now quite a bit harder to push than it was before. Now I guess this could happen to any box with wheels that are riveted to the bottom of it, but I've been using the Bikebox Allen for a lot of years now, like, I don't know, the last seven years or six years or so, and with my Bikebox Allen I've never had that problem. Uh, the wheels have worn out a fair bit, but they've never bent against the box. So that's the only real negative. There's a lot to like about this box and in a lot of ways it's actually a bit better than a bike box, Alan. But uh, there you go. On to the bit you've all been waiting for, competition time. So this week's prize is pretty cool. So we're gonna give away a set of custom Pegatin name stickers for your bike and you can have whatever you want written on them, whether that's your name or if you wanna get them for a friend, you can put a friend's name on pretty cool and if you've not seen these stickers before they're um, they're really good and I like to put them on all my bikes like people well it's uh, just adds a really nice sort of pro touch I think to your bike and it's nice to put your name on your bike it's cool it's not it's not just pro it's just nice to have your name on it it's your pride and joy so to be in with a chance to win all you have to do is comment below and well subscribe you better subscribe first but then comment below um, with any question you like to do with cycling. H have to stress that, to do with cycling. Don't, I don't wanna know about some lingering rash you've got or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll answer those questions um, in a forthcoming video that we'll do that simply your questions answered, which should be a, quite a nice thing to do, I think. Um, so yeah, that's all you have to do, and I'll pick my favorite uh, question. Uh, but until then, I'll see you next week, or next Monday, for the next vlog. So. See you later. Have a good weekend, or week, or whatever. <laughs>